Okay. So I hope everybody enjoyed their lunch. We are about to begin the afternoons, uh, the afternoon portion, where we're going to be switching our hats from media to money, which is, I guess, always a good thing to do while you're digesting food. I'm not really sure. Anyway, um, I'm Karen Karp, and um, as has been um, mentioned earlier, we've been partnering with the James Beard Foundation on the production of this conference. We're really, really pleased to be here and to be doing this. Um, I think un unintentionally this has become a little bit of a conference about media, money, and meat, because <laughs> we keep talking about meat, and that was a little bit unintentional, but maybe means what it's supposed to mean. Um, we are, I'm just going to do a little, little bit of an exercise, um, which is related to meat, and tell you a little story. You can switch the slide, please. Um, for some of you who were here last year, um, you can put the next slide on whenever you're ready. For some of you who were here last year, you might remember that we mapped our meal last year. Um, we looked at where all the ingredients that we had on our plate, and we mapped them for you to show you where, they, where everything came from. This year, we decided with the topic of money, we would map the money in a supply chain. And we chose the cow before any, anybody sent in their videos and sent in their presentations. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of the story about what we did instead of mapping the money chain of, of beef, American beef, and why. So at the start of this, we decided, oh, our conference is about money. We're going to look at a beef supply chain X and where the money flows, and we're going to look at beef supply chain B and where the money flows, and we're going to show and illustrate exactly the difference of where the money goes. Somebody mentioned earlier, where does the dollar go? Where do the cents go? And we actually got really, really close to look to identifying where every few cents goes in two very different kinds of beef supply chain, of just a t no normal commodity beef supply chain and a local grass-fed beef supply chain. But we didn't find out a couple of things, and that made me think to tell a different story about that is more related to what this conference is about, which is it's getting us to think a little bit differently and getting us to question our assumptions about things and decide where we want to take action. So instead, what I'm going to do is tell you a little bit of a story of two money chains, and I'm going to reflect a little bit about two value chains around beef as a little interlude of my own. So beef is an example, like we heard with the tomato, where there's lots of data to be had and lots of exchange of money, and sometimes that money disappears. But I went back to, if anybody recalls, about 10, and I didn't remember, it was 10 years ago, 10 years ago, um, the Michael Pollan's New York Times magazine cover story, Power Steer, really was a very good basic illustration and one of the first stories ever of showing us how a commodity product works. So I'm just going to mention a bunch of numbers. There's nothing you need to literally take away from this other than that the age of a cow at slaughter these days in a commodity beef system is 14 to 16 months. The average weight is 1,250 pounds. The average carcass weight is 797 pounds. The price paid to the farmer, around $120. Price per pound, you can do the math. <clears throat> Certification comes a little bit later. Slaughter costs, can't really find that out. Fred, you might know. <laughs> but not really easy to find exactly per head how much it costs to slaughter a cow in order to send it to market. <clears throat> what we do know is that it costs about $1.60, maybe $1.80 a day at a feedlot to feed a cow between the time it arrives there and the time that it goes to slaughter. We also know that two generations ago, cows were four to five years old. Now they're 14 to 16 months, as I mentioned earlier, thinking about the notion of fast food. We know that it's a very high volume, very low margin business, but how low? Where is the money shrinking in that chain? A little bit difficult. I couldn't tell you with certainty what a wholesaler and a retailer profits on beef. I can tell you that the rancher probably profits 2.4 to 3.6 cents a pound on that cow. I can tell you that 1.2 gallons of oil are used to produce a bushel of corn and that a bushel of corn 10 years ago was $2.25. I meant to check last night what it is today, but I didn't get a chance to do that. We can tell you that the ranchers who raise this meat are pretty much all family farmers, pretty much all working on their homestead, pretty much all raising 
50% more animals than they were 10 years ago because of where the money doesn't flow in that chain. So what we also can tell you is that, the, that 50 years ago, we didn't really have a safe, secure, reliable supply of meat on our supermarket shelves, and now we do. We have created an affordable, palatable product that stays fresh for probably just as long as it needs to stay fresh and is available, widely available. <clears throat> We looked at the grass-fed beef chain, and we went to meet uh, somebody on my staff, and I went to meet with Jake Dixon, who runs a, a, a store at the Chelsea Market here in New York City, Dixon's Farm Stand. And he gets a whole bunch of animals from a whole bunch of different local sources, but we wanted him to tell us the story of his grass-fed beef. So, statistics. Average age at slaughter, 26 to 27 months, almost double. Average carcass weight. 630 pounds, 150 pounds less. The price paid to the farmer, $1,732. Price paid per pound to the farmer, $2.75. The difference between this chain and the one I just told you about, 1,804% difference in the price paid to the person who is care raising and caring for that animal. The slaughter costs, easy to find out from our friend Jake Dixon, $130 per head. Great. Cost to bring it to New York City and everything that's involved, $500. And one of the farmers brings, the far not, not the grass-fed beef farmer, but a pork farmer brings the beef. It's a little complicated, but we know exactly how much it costs. It takes one of his guys 30 minutes to break this cow down. It takes another range of staff at his store nine hours to finish cutting this animal into what you would see on the shelf at Dixon's Farm Sand in Chelsea Market. The one piece of information he didn't want to give us, how much he paid his cutters to cut that meat, the folks that work for him. Everybody doesn't want to tell you one thing. That is what we learned when we tried to trace these two supply chains. What we learned is that Jake Dixon takes a nose-to-tail approach for beef, which is pretty pretty popular in common with pork, but not really for beef. And because he does that, he is able to sell 98.9% of the animal that he gets. <clears throat> what we know is that there is a small army of butchers who are there working in his shop committed to what, what Jake Dixon's supply chain is about. What we know is that when he had an accident that wasn't his on the New York Thruway, his insurance went up from $1,500 a year to $7,500 a year, and he didn't want to let that cost impact what he charges at the store, along with grain costs and feed costs that went up. So, and then we looked at a couple of other, a couple of other things that tell us some things about grading and certification. That certain kinds of grading is really grading on taste, not grading on anything different about what happens in the supply chain. And other kinds of certification has to do with assuring that our animals are raised well, slaughtered well, and have a, have a much better um, uh, sustainability value for the environment and social issues. So one of the things we learned, and this is just to lead us, this is a great lead into the next topic that we are covering here today because we're going into big topics around, big concepts around money, is what is really the difference between these two supply chains? It, it is definitely dollars and cents, but more than dollars and cents, it is about transparency, it is about concentration in certain chains as opposed to elasticity in other chains. It is about both chains having dependencies. The bigger chain depends on bigger systems, it be bigger risk, it, it depends on commodity markets. The smaller chain depends on the relationship with the farmer and the farmer getting the cow to the slaughterhouse and the pig farmer coming to the slaughterhouse to bring the cow down to New York and hopefully not getting it into an accident on the New York State Thruway, which is pretty easy to do on a cold, dark night. This, the dependencies we have on scale and on parts of the system that we can't see is part of what we want to begin to sort of look at this afternoon in our conversations about money. And it's part of what was illustrated in this journey of finding out what we can find out about where money flows. Because it's not really, it is really about where the money flows, but it's also about the, as we mentioned earlier before, these social systems that are part of breaking down a cow. So with that, I'm going to turn the conversation back over to Joseph, who's going to introduce our next panel and introduce the topic of money for this afternoon. Thank you.